and impact. I have a, a kind of a dual question for you. One of them is, did you have any special training to do this, and what gave you the idea to do this? Okay, I'll, Fred, let me, let me, uh, let me first uh, answer the question about what gave me the idea. As a librarian, I've always been in information. Don't forget, when I started, the whole thing in libraries about information, getting information out to people, making inf information accessible. That was the mantra in libraries. Sure. Information has morphed into content. Uh, so when I was a little bit younger, uh, I was walking around, and at that time, people were exercising, and they they had uh, either uh, an iPod or something attached to their arm. I thought they I thought they were heart monitors. I thought they were patients from hospitals walking around. <laughs> but then I realized, oh my goodness, <laughs> they're listening to recordings that have been made. That's how they're getting their information, so to speak. At that time, I, we called it information. Then I said, we've got to get into this. We've got to get into this. And then, of course, the technology that also advanced to the point where, wow, you don't have to have huge cameras. You don't have to use huge recorders. You can get off-the-shelf stuff that any person can learn to use. And you know, you're only limited by your imagination. Mm -hmm. So. In order to do this well, and if anybody is out there wants to engage in this type of activity, you have to have a minute uh, uh, imagination, a commitment, and a joy in doing it. And all those things I felt I had. Did I have any technical training? No. Did I need a technical training? You know, I, I read a few things, but it's not, it's not a kind of activity where you have to get a, a four-year degree and then get a master's in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think you could just go to Staples if you're having, or Best Buy, if you're having a problem with any of the equipment and you, don't, you want to know something more about it. And any one of those wonderful people who work there will tell you all about it. Well, here's, here's something to keep in mind, Linda. I just heard recently that a whole feature film was shot using a smartphone. <laughs> That's, it's amazing. That is amazing. It is amazing, it? yeah. I, I, it, Cell phones have become such a part of our culture. Absolutely. Um, last Christmas, um, I took my family, my family and I went to Rockefeller Center to see the Christmas tree. And we were standing behind the Christmas tree. Not, you know, Fifth Avenue was up there. And we were behind the Christmas tree. And I looked out and I see all these white lights. And I'm thinking, what are those? And I realized, they're cell phones. Every person out there, and there were thousands of people, well, probably. I don't know, maybe not thousands in Rockefeller Center, but every person had a cell phone and they were all taking a picture of the Christmas tree. And I thought to myself, everybody has one of those things and what a, what a tool. And of course we see how it's changing us globally, politically. It's a, a political tool really. Uh, if there's a movement, for instance, if there's a, you wanna read Donald Trump's tweets or you don't wanna read Donald Trump's tweets, it's all there. It's all there. So I'm just going to shift off for a minute. I'm going to shift off the serious stuff and ask you to tell me what was the most interesting thing you listened to on your podcast, the funniest, the craziest? The most interesting, um, one of the most interesting, uh, they're all interesting, um, is that I, I did a series of uh, podcasts with veterans, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, and it was so interesting to me to hear how different the tone and the attitude was of the different of the different veterans from different wars. Yes, yeah. World War II, you could sense uh, a real pride in their service. Mm -hmm. Korea was a little different. And then in Vietnam, angst. you could, yes, you could hear the angst, you could hear the bitterness you could hear almost the regret. And to, in some cases, it was actually heartbreaking. The funniest stuff was, again, came from the veterans in terms of, in terms of some of the things they did. I remember interviewing this, well, it wasn't probably too funny, but I remember interviewing this veteran who had served during the Battle of the Bulge, and he was a machine gunner. And the man before me looked like anybody's grandfather, anybody's uncle, uh, a very nice gentleman, but this man did some 
I'll, I'm going to use a euphemism, interesting things during the Battle of the Bulge. And he also had some stories to relate with regard to how Germans and Americans uh, acted during that period, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure you're going to get in a mainstream publication or a mainstream uh, outlet. So that kind of set me back on my chair. And I, when I, I remember going home that night and talking to my sons, my brother, my wife, and I said, you want to hear this? So after, after that feeling passed, I said, man, I feel, like I, I feel like we really contributed to the knowledge of this time period by doing this. So yeah, that, that came true through to me as something that said, yeah, yeah, Peter, libraries doing this is very important. Because yeah. nobody else is going to do it. Yeah. Do, did you, have you interviewed anybody from the Gulf Wars? Not yet. Yeah, that should, because I, it, I don't know if it's my imagination. You as a librarian would probably be able to be, have your finger on the pulse of this. But I think there's been a growing interest in veterans and what they have to say. And I don't know whether it's because we, have focused so much on uh, the re results of the Gulf Wars on uh, the on our volunteer army, or whether it's I don't know what it is. I, am I imagining this? Well, I think I think what's happening is yes, there has to be a time that will pass in which, uh, if these wars ever end, that people are, you know uh, television uh, networks and, and movies are going. I mean, you start to see a little bit of that in the movies. Uh, but again, it's a movie. Uh, what I like about what we do as parents is we, we sit down with the person and we say, tell us your story. Mm -hmm. We don't tell them what to say. We don't edit it. We don't try to guide what they're saying. Just tell us what you have in your heart and in your head. And sometimes that is, is more engaging, has more of an impact than if you uh, did the same sort of program with all the production values and all the producers and all the directors getting their fingers into it. We don't put our fingers into people's stories. Mm -hmm. We don't put our fingers into an author telling us, gee, this is why I wrote this book. Right. So I think a lot of what we see with regard to uh, more complicated uh, productions is that there are too many, too many people putting their fingers into another person's story. You don't edit. it. No, we don't. <laughs> So, no. so that makes a difference. Now if I, John Doe says this is what happened, then when it's recorded and, and, and distributed, you're going to hear John Doe telling you what happened. We have about a minute left, and I know that you're going to take this idea of yours with the podcast to the next step. You want to talk about it? Well, I think, again, as social media develops, as you have more and more authors uh, sharing their stories, that there's going to be much, much more of an opportunity to gather this content and, and present it to people. The thing that I would like to see and the thing that uh, we did at Lindenhurst is that we've designated librarians to be one person is our Facebook manager, one person is our, uh, our, our Twitter manager. And I, I, I think you're going to see much more of that in libraries across the nation in which Librarians are going to be trained to be YouTube managers, Facebook managers, because there is a nuance and there is an art to maximizing those so social media outlets to the, to the fullest effect. So that's what I think you're going to see, and that's what I'm looking forward to, because quite frankly, I'm, I'm getting tired of just doing this myself. Peter, the best of luck to you. Thank you. This is a great idea, and I hope to see it really blossom in the future, and I hope to see it spread to other libraries. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. Okay.